Hey guys, it's Doc. Guess what we're talking about today? We're talking about grease fittings that are such a pain in the butt on your mowers. I'm gonna show you a quick little tool that I found that is my favorite little tool and it's only about nine bucks. So hold on one sec. Hey guys, uh, this is the second of three videos I'm shooting today alone. <laughs> so I'm doing uh, Killing Nuts Edge, the grease fitting video and the new PGF complete application in July. You never put fertilizer up July. I'm going to show you that you're doing that too. Uh, make sure you subscribe and also don't forget the giveaway. So we're moving into the garage because it's so darn hot out there. By the way, all you got to do if you want to be signed up for our giveaways that we're doing, um, just be a subscriber to the channel. Go over to the website, sign up for the email alerts. It's not a marketing system, it's just an alert system. That's it. You're done, you're registered. It's pretty simple. But the PGF Complete is up on Amazon. Amazing stuff. <laughs> if nothing else, buy a bag, put out a test strip. Test it for yourself and see. Great stuff. So let's talk about these grease fittings. So every mower that you typically have, the majority of them have some kind of grease fittings, whether it's a riding mower, real mower, whatever mower. Uh, spreaders have them as well, and I'll show you the difference. Let me show you an example of three. Oh, there's a grease fitting on my uh, real mower, as an example. As an, another example, there is a grease fitting on one of my spreaders, and that's for the wheel lubrication. Okay, and as a real pain in the butt example, this is, I, if I could kick anyone's butt, it would be the engineers that designed this stuff. So there's a plastic cover here. You gotta loosen all this and try and get the spindle. But you can see, oh, there's a grease fitting right there. And guess what's in the way? The metal rod. <laughs> uh, so that's, these are spindles under my mower deck for John Deere. So each blade has one of these spindle gears and there are one to two grease fittings on each one that need to be taken care of. All right, so as an example, the positioning of this grease fitting right here is simple, isn't it? Well, as this blade moves, the grease fitting moves too. Oh, that's easy access, but let's go down here. <laughs> All right, so let's go down in here. Look at that grease fitting. How the heck am I supposed to access that thing? It's pointed, it's pointed in the upward position and without taking apart this thing, this whole piece in here, I cannot get to that grease fitting. I cannot get a grease, I cannot get a grease hub on that. No matter what I try. And what happens is, is the grease, you'll see, you'll notice you don't get a good connection if the grease sort of shoots out around that little nub, the grease fitting it's not going inside. So number one, you always want to clean them off, wipe them off. I did find, I'll put a link to this too. So I'm going to put a link to these. These are little grease, uh, grease fitting caps. Now they do come with, so it does come with a little wrap around that you can put on the fitting and then this will fold over and cover it up and keeps the grease fitting nice and clean, which does help over years, keeps it from rusting. So I went ahead and I put one as an example. I put one on here. I didn't put the lock, but you can just pull this off now and that grease fitting will stay nice and clean and won't rust up. So, but how do I access that stupid thing? All right, so let me show you a couple of things here. And my workbench is an absolute mess. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I got a hundred things going on today. All right, so here is a standard grease gun. You got a big long handle. It comes in, now this model comes in with a metal tube on it which you can't fit anywhere. I mean, it's unless those things are just sitting pretty. So the first thing you do is you take this off and throw it up in a cabinet somewhere. Then what you do, I'll put a link to this. You order one of these extension tubes. These extension tubes are flexible and you can put whatever fittings you want on there. But this big arm, this big arm as an example, you're sitting there holding that grease fitting on and there's no way to operate this big arm. It's a pain in the butt. So that's why what I did is I went in the head and I got one of these. Now this is a hand one. So what I can do is I can hold the grease gun in one hand and I can crank this and I can get it while the other hand is actually holding on the grease fitting. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but it really is. And if you've ever used one of these, you know what I mean. You're lying on your back trying to get a grease fitting and you can't pump this handle. So this is the one I'm gonna link to. 
Next, <clears throat> let's talk about some of the adapters. This is one of these uh, uh, lock lube adapters. So what happens is, is this little end here goes out and grabs it, boom, and then it pops back in. Works pretty good, especially if you're straight on, but if you have any kind of angle, it doesn't work. That's what I've learned. So it works okay, and it's not cheap. The next one that I got is this little one. Now this is a, um, a spinning unit. You just pull this down, you pull that, and you can change your angles. So these angles all change. It's a standard little push on fitting. This is a pretty good little piece. Again, it's not cheap. But the winner that I found was this one. <laughs> now this is a little uh, 90 degree slide on fitting and it is fantastic. It solved all my problems and I'll show you here in a sec. So I'm gonna do this live for the very first time. <laughs> I have yet to be able to get a single grease fitting to go on that. So, okay, so the first time didn't work that well. So what I did is I put this new hose with this little expandable spring on it so I could get better pressure on it. Oh, thank God. <laughs> this has been a nightmare. I can get to every other one of these fittings that I have to. It's just this one right here. And let me show you. Okay. So you understand my frustration. Okay. The top one, you can see that every time I've squeezed my handle, grease just shoots out around the fitting. I can't get a good seal on there. However, so there's one on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. There's one on the bottom that I finally... There's one on the bottom that I finally was able to connect to. But here's what I'm looking for. Look at the axle. Here's what I want you to watch. Okay, let's see if I get to focus here. Watch the axle. And you'll see grease start to shoot out. See the grease shooting out? That's what I want right there. So when I see grease shooting out of that joint, I know that that is now filling up with grease. I really don't concentrate so much. I watch my nipple. That's the first time I've been able to get grease in there. <laughs> Unreal. And that's the only tool that has allowed me to get in there and do that. Oh my God. <laughs> Swear to God, I'm sitting here drenched in sweat. This has been two weeks to try and get grease in there. And that is the only tool that has been able to do it. Hallelujah. <laughs> let me pull it okay. off. So let me show you how this little thing works. You can see that the grease nipple slides inside here, slides inside there, and there's a little hole on the side that the grease shoots out of. Let me see, how am I gonna do this and let you see? Okay, now watch, I'm gonna squeeze the handle on the grease gun. See it? So that's how you do it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some of these yellow caps on the rest of these so they don't rust. They just rust up and get clogged up with crap. Okay, so let me <laughs> let me try and show you this here. So this is so that's the slot. Now this is a metal version of the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on here, and then I'm going to push. <clears throat> And let's see if the grease will go in this one. Now this is the big handle one I've got. Yeah, grease is going in, I guess. Man, oh, there it goes. She squirted all out of there. The grease is going in there now, so I'm going to pull it off. Oh, this is the hard part. That's the easiest way I've learned how to get it off, but you may have been able to see some of the grease squirt out of here, and that tells me that it's going in there and filling it up, which I never could before. Again, this is the metal version of this. I'll put a link to that too. So it really is critical that you get grease into these fittings. Um, I've seen things locked up before, but that little tool, I have one spindle on my John Deere that I've never been able to get grease into, 
and now I can thanks to this tool. I've got one grease fitting on my real mower. I've never been able to get grease into it. Thanks to this tool, I've got it into it. Uh, one of my spreaders I've always had troubles with, that tool. I'm telling you, I think it's about 10 bucks. There's a link to it below. Um, I'm actually not going to put out the PGF today because it's later in the day and it's got to be 96 degrees out here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot that PGF uh, heat application probably tomorrow morning. The PGF Complete, man, I'm telling you, you need to get a bag of that and you need to try it. You can, I'll put a, I'll put at the bottom of the page in this link down here, um, I'll put the fitting links and then I'll put a bag linked to the PGF Complete, but man, you've got to try that stuff. It's absolutely amazing. And yes, you can put it out in the summertime because it's very mild. <sighs> we'll take a break. Talk to you later, Doc. Mm -hmm.